One of our adages here at Active Self Protection is that misses don't end gunfights, but it's not always true. Mm. Hi friends, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from the Big Apple, New York City. Magtech is the only pistol or rifle ammo I use on the range and I recommend them highly. I've seen their manufacturing and quality control firsthand and it's incredible, which is why it always performs reliably and accurately. They are operating at max capacity and cranking out rounds for you to keep your skills sharp. Pick up some MagTech at your local ammo retailer or get it shipped fast at LuckyGunner.com. This one begins with uh, some folks in this Lexus here had had an argument with the guy who just shows up again in his chonies and a balaclava with a gun. And, and he had left and then came back with a gun. The guy in the group runs off down the, the top there and then the ladies are left there to kind of deal with this guy. He actually, at some point, I can't actually tell in the video when, but he wings a shot off into a, a parked car across the street and then grabs this chair and decides to mosey on down the road with a gun in his hand, which you'd naturally expect leads to multiple 911 calls of a man wandering down the street in a balaclava with a gun. Well, that is going to bring some of New York City's finest to the yard to see what this boy's milkshake is. And when they do show up, they are gonna go looking for him. We do have audio on this one from the badge cams, so let's listen in and see what happens. Where? Put him down! Put him down! Drop it! Drop it! Three David! Shots fired, Central! Down! Put it there! Shots fired! Shots fired! No one equal seven four! No one Put your arms behind you! Put it! Nobody's hurt, Central! In custody. Shot fired. Shot fired. Shot fired. Shot fired. Shot fired. Shot fired. Shot Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Keep your hands. Keep your fucking hands. Officer fired four shots. None of them hit the bad guy. None of them also injured a bystander that I can tell. Uh, he dropped the gun, dropped the load in his pants, was arrested, and is facing charges. Only thing I'm going to say in the mid-roll on this one is this officer, he needs to up his handgun skills a little bit. Good place to do that. Active self-protection extra. Mm -hmm. Free training. Go get it. I'm going to ride my horse a little bit here again that this one should have been handled by the private citizens, right? It's a post-Bruin world and even people in New York City can carry firearms outside their home now and get concealed carry permits. Uh, and, and this one, they absolutely needed to shoot this guy and stop this threat long before it did. It's only a miracle nobody was shot. Now, New Yorkers, understand, we know, we understand, we read the news. If you listen to my podcast, we talk to Stephen Gutowski every week and frequently we discuss how the politicians in New York State are trying to um, trying to ruin everything. They're why we can't have nice things. They're trying to make all these prohibited spaces. But if you can get a CCW, get it. Get it and use it. If you're out in the street, you can carry a gun. So just, just as an aside, this film was not brought to you by the New York City Board of Tourism, by the way. No, it absolutely was not. And I mean, the jokes just write themselves about the dude in a balaclava walking down the street with a gun in his hand. Now, <clears throat> okay, I, I think what bravery by these officers. We know we got a guy with a gun who's shooting at people and they move into it. And so I admire him for his bravery. That said, I got a big problem with what's coming up here because, uh, you know, when you look at the distances that he's got, he sees the guy, gets the gun up, moving in, kind of stops a little bit. And I think he's right at three car lengths away. So something resembling 15 to 20 yards away. He fires four shots here. And Mike, he is firing them right down the sidewalk and he missed them. And it, listen, if you can't guarantee your hits at these distances, you've got to be disciplined enough not to take the shot. Yeah, I, we talked about this, John, in a bunch of other videos and it bears repeating. You need, as an officer, as a deputy, you need to be confident enough in your marksmanship skills. And competent a, enough. Yes, yes. Well, I'm saying, but that, that, that competency breeds confidence, right? Hopefully. I mean, that's, that's, that's the idea. Um, that in this moment, when you realize you could be shot at at any second, you're confident enough that you take the amount of time, you're deliberate enough 
that you stand tall and deliver shots on target because these rounds are going to go, I'm not an expert on ballistics, but they're going to go super duper far beyond where this guy is. And in a, in, a, in a place like New York City, any borough of New York City, day or night, 24 hours a day, there's a city that never sleeps, there's people on the streets, there's people out and about. These little, I've been to New York, I've seen these little construction barriers here, it's just plywood. Yeah, it's uh, nothing. It, it may or may not stop a bullet depending on how it gets hit. So. You've got to be confident and competent in your marksmanship as a police officer. And if you're not, and you're watching this, you already know that. So get to the range and do what you have to do to get better. Well, and, and listen, your qualification requires shots beyond this. And if you're that not confident, then you just gotta have the discipline not to take it. If you're on the edge, at the very least, I would say you need to take a knee here so that the trajectory of those rounds, it goes up and into something high and gets out of the line of fire of innocent bystanders because it's just literally the grace of God that somebody wasn't hit by these rounds. And, and, and listen, okay, they weren't, so okay, fine. I do like here, though, that, all right, the guy did drop the gun, and the officer made a good decision here to stop firing at him. And, and that takes good emotional fitness to go, okay, this guy just was a deadly threat to me, but he's not right now, and so I'm not going to shoot him. That was a good decision. Yeah, we, you talk all the time, John, about the human performance and how, how there's limitations to it. So the moment a thought goes through your head, your body can't respond a millisecond later. It takes a second for you to realize, okay, this, is, this has happened now. What do I do next? In this case, I think as soon as he possibly could realize, okay, the gun's been dropped, this guy's facing away from me now, I no longer have a target, I no longer have a person who's shootable, for lack of a better word, he dips the gun, which is a good call. I can't tell, I don't know if he knew his partner was over there or not, um, but that could be another part of it is, hey, he may have a better shot than I do, so I want to dip this muzzle, plus he could be around this guy, I don't want to accidentally shoot my partner, yada, yada, you get the idea. Yeah, I, I just think it, that was a good decision to stop shooting, and... And so, listen, we can only shoot when we have an imminent uh, deadly threat in our, uh, you know, in our sights. And so he doesn't. That's very good. I also like here he does drop his muzzle. You said that earlier. Of course, his partner now is right in his backstop. And the guy's hands are wildly, you know, he's waving them in the air like he just don't care. And that's correct. And so he dips his muzzle because I don't need to shoot this guy right now. So I don't want to point a gun at him. And I certainly don't want to point my gun at my partner. So that was good muzzle discipline. Yeah, 100%. And at this moment, I guarantee you, John, in this moment, Officer Torres is wondering where did those rounds go? Because he can tell this guy ain't shot. If he was shot, he's pasty white. Everything he's wearing is light in color. There's no blood. So I guarantee you he's now immediately concerned. Oh, crap. I just put four rounds down range. Where did they land? Yeah, where did those and go? You don't want, in this moment, you don't want to be preoccupied with that thought. You want all your attention on your bad guy. But in this moment, I promise you, I would be very, very nervous about where those rounds went. So you don't want to have that uh, clouding your thinking in a moment like this. Yeah. And if you look down the block there, thankfully, it looks like there was nobody there. By some crazy miracle, you've got an empty sidewalk in New York City. And so, again, success is a wonderful deodorant, right? And, and so there's all that. I just want us to really think about the, the risk that that was. And again, you wanna be real cautious not to point a gun at your partner. They get this dummy in, in custody. Okay, let's get him out of society and out of the gene pool for golly gosh sakes. Now, the partner coming up here, I love that he takes a second angle, that he doesn't come right behind him. He takes that L-shaped ambush, love that noise. Okay, he's gonna have a real small window here and I just wanna talk about it because you've got a minivan with, of course, a soccer mom and, and probably three nuns and two orphans in it. We're gonna assume there's 17 children in that car. Yeah, 17 right now. children and three nuns or yes. something like that. And, and of course, you don't wanna point a gun at those people, right? And, and you can't point a gun at those people. I don't think he did. And so I'm, I admire him for that. It's just, there's gonna be times where you can see the bad guy just on the other side where your margin for success is real slim, which is why you train hard. Absolutely. I think um, in this case, I think we, we reviewed this several times before we sat down here. It looks like he just, you know, he, he just brought his gun, he presented his firearm just after he would have been pointing it at them. It looks like this was, this was pretty clean, but this goes to show you, these situations are extremely dynamic. What, what you don't know and what's going through the back of this officer's head most likely is, uh, man, I hope this minivan doesn't start moving all of a sudden. I hope it doesn't start proceeding forward. I hope she sees me and doesn't move. Um, because as we talked about earlier, that human performance thing, the bad guy could be behind that car, raise a gun, and she could hit the gas right at the moment he fires. There's a million things are going through your mind. So I think the most important thing here, John, is, is trigger discipline, muzzle discipline, and marksmanship. Um, it turns out this officer didn't have to shoot. He recognized in time, okay, this guy has dropped the gun. 
There's no longer an immediate threat from him. And I, I can't tell if he knew his partner was behind there, but I like pretty much everything about what this officer did, Officer uh, Ruhel. Yeah, I, I do as well. Here is a, another uh, way that, that I want to just give a claim to the low ready position. Because again, if I've got a gun up and pointed at this guy's chest in his center mass, I probably, if I'm using irons especially, I can't see his hands. Mm -hmm. And having just seen him with a gun in his hand, I might end up shooting this guy and shooting an unarmed guy. So this is why a low ready is so important because I get that gun out of my line of sight so that I can see his hands and, and recognize, oh, I don't need to shoot this guy. It's still very fast. We've proven that time and time again, you can get a shot off very quickly from a low ready position. And this is why it's so critically important because of course, you, you know, not only do you not wanna shoot somebody that doesn't need to get shot for the legal repercussions, but for the moral repercussions, you wanna do the right thing, preserve life and not shoot somebody if you don't have to. And, and I think that, that uh, off, you know, Officer Rugo, I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, sorry officer, uh, I think he did a pretty darn excellent job at that and deserves commendation. I, I think that in the end of things, good. We got this dummy off the streets. This is really great stuff. I, I think that Officer Rugel here did a really, really phenomenal job. The other officer, man, just be cautious of those shots. I, I think that, um, man, thank goodness nobody was harmed. Let's make sure that we don't put people at risk like that and better cover our ASP.